Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Um, we are going to be uh, going over and covering a very disturbing uh, call that Adam Lanza made to a radio program in 2011. He called into a Oregon radio show called Anarchy Radio and he relates a very interesting and very disturbing story. He talks about Travis the Chimp and he talks a little bit about I think his own mindset and how he views society. Now this is interesting to me for many reasons. You know I have been uh, investigating certain we'll just say disturbing cases um, like Adams and one of the things that I've come across was his psychiatrist not that long ago was charged for inappropriate activity with children and that same theme seemed to be featured a lot in Adam's writings um, so anyways uh, that's gonna be a different video we'll do deep dives uh, into some of the things he wrote because it's deeply deeply disturbing uh, and some of the things that were uh, uncovered on his YouTube channel that wasn't discovered until 2021, actually. Um, and we might uh, go over those recordings. But now I want to go over the radio call. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do a review of that. Uh, and I'm going to play it now. Here we go. Hello. We get the collapsible headphones here, but... Uh... We're back. Sorry, we got Greg on the phone. Oh, Greg. Okay. How's it going? Oh, hi. Good. Um, I'm a fan of your writing. Um, Thank you. I'm Thank sorry you to mess up such an old news story, but... So Adam is referring to himself as Greg in this call. He's concealing his identity, but this is absolutely, uh, in my opinion, him. I couldn't find anything that you said about the topic. And it seems relevant to your interest, so I thought I'd bring up Travis the Chimp. Do you remember him? I don't. Well, um, he was a highly domesticated chimpanzee who lived in a suburban home in Stamford, Connecticut. Oh, yeah. Oh. And he was raised just like a human child, starting from the week he was born. By the time that he was 14 years old, which would be somewhere around age 20 in human years. Uh-huh. Um, he slept in a bed. He took his own baths. He dressed himself. He brushed his teeth with an electric toothbrush. <laughs> really? When was this? Um, well, this happened in early 2009. Oh. Oh. Um, uh -huh. he so he is relaying the story of Travis the Chimp that he clearly relates to. This, um, this uh, chimpanzee that was domesticated and then um, a sedated um, and given pharmaceuticals, which he did not like. He ate his meals at a table and enjoyed human foods like ice cream. And he used a remote control to watch television and liked baseball games. And he even used a computer to look at pictures on the internet. Huh. And it goes without saying that Travis was very overweight. He was 200 pounds when he should have been around the low hundreds. Mm -hmm. So being in that sort of like decadent environment was unnatural to this animal and it caused him to live an unhealthy lifestyle. He gains a bunch of weight basically because he's not being challenged by his environment and he's not properly living as he's supposed to live in his environment. At least that's what I take from what he's saying. And he was actually taking Xanax. <sighs> Amazing. I couldn't find any information about why he was taking it, but it just seems to say a lot that he was giving it at all. And basically, I think Travis wasn't really any different than a mentally handicapped human child. Hmm. But anyway, one day in February 2009, he was acting very agitated, and at some point grabbed the car his owner's car keys, went outside and started beeping from car to car, apparently wanting to go for a car ride and he was acting very aggressively. So his owner called her friend over to get her to help him to calm down and go back inside. And once she arrived, he immediately attacked her and his owner tried to stop him, but couldn't. And she even resorted to stabbing him with a knife, but nothing worked. So his owner even resorted to harming him and that didn't seem to help. 
uh, that didn't calm him down. Um, what occurs to me is, is that he sees this uh, monkey as kind of no different as he says from a mentally handicapped child. So he sees like human qualities in this chimpanzee and I believe he sees himself in this um, monkey. And she said that after she stabbed him, he looked at her as if to say, why do you do that to me, mom? Because apparently that was what the relationship was like, no different than between a human mother and a human child. I also think that there is, um, that he kind of uh, identifies with the story of Travis the chimp. Um, also because of the relationship between Travis and his female owner who kind of raised him like a child. Um, and his own relationship with his mother, Nancy, uh, which was, you know, very codependent and deeply unhealthy. You know, it's not good to neglect a child, but there is something to be said also for over parenting or uh, suffocating a child. So after the stabbing, she called the police who arrived 12 minutes after the attack, at which point her friend was pretty close to dead. And once the cruiser came up, Travis went over to it, tried to open the locked passenger door. He smashed off the side view mirror, went over to the driver's door, opened it, and the cop shot him. He fled back into the house where he went to his playroom and bled to death. Hmm. And so he went to his playroom to die, which is sad. It's like a child going to their nursery to die. Um, this might not seem very relevant, but I'm bringing him up because afterward, everyone was condemning his owner for saying how irresponsible she was for raising a chimp like it was a child, and that she should have known something like this would happen because chimps aren't supposed to be living in civilization. They're supposed to be living in the wild among each other. Mm -hmm. But their criticism stops there, and the implication is that there's no way anything could have gone wrong in his life if he had been living in civilization as a human rather than a chimp. So this is like where his analysis of this is going is that he um, it's almost as if he values the chimp more than humans that he puts more uh, concern on the well-being uh, in the mental state of this chimpanzee than on the humans around it but I do think he, he has an interesting point he makes a very interesting point about how Oh, if if the if Travis was a human, this wouldn't have happened. Oh, really? And what it says about uh, people being well adjusted in a profoundly sick society. Ah, oh, indeed. Did in Travis, um, because he brings up questions about this whole process of child raising. Um, yeah. Isn't something which just happens to gently exist without us having to do anything? Because every newborn child, human child is born in a chimp-like state, and civilization is only sustained by conditioning them for years on end, so that they'll accept it for what it is. And since we've gone through this conditioning, we can observe a human family raising a human child, and I'm sure that even you have trouble intuitively seeing it as something unnatural. But when we see a chimp in that position, we visually know that there's something profoundly wrong with the situation. And it's easy to say there's something wrong with it simply because it's a chimp, but what's the real difference between us and our closest relatives. Travis wasn't an untamed monster at all. Um, he wasn't just feigning domestication. He was civilized. Um, he was able to integrate into society. He was a chimp actor when he was younger, and his owner drove him around the city frequently in association with her towing business where he met many different people. I think that's kind of interesting that, the, that Travis the chimp was a child actor, basically. He, he was a child actor as a, a chimpanzee, I suppose, but yeah, that's strange. And got along with everyone. If Travis had been some nasty monster all his life, it would have been widely reported, but to the contrary, it seems like everyone who knew him said how shocked they were that Travis had been so savage because they knew him as a sweet child. There's the line. That line gets me. Everybody was so shocked about how savage he had been because everyone knew him as a sweet child. It is so eerie, isn't it? And there were two isolated incidents early in his life when he acted aggressively, but summarizing them would take too long. So basically, I'll just say that he didn't act really any differently than a human child would. And... 
the people who would use that as an indictment against having chimps live as humans do wouldn't apply the same thing to humans, so it's just kind of irrelevant. Mm -hmm. But anyway, look what civilization did to him. It had the same exact effect on him as it has on humans. He so he's saying civilization did this to Travis just as it does to human beings. It is actually civilization that is to blame for not only Travis's actions, but I think he's really hinting at the actions of other um, spree attackers, I suppose you could say. It was profoundly sick. Basically, people who have kind of snapped as a result of civilization. It's very interesting because it reminds me a lot of what uh, um, uh, Ted Kaczynski kind of talked about with the, the issues with modernity and industrial society. I look what civilization did to him. It had the same exact effect on him as it has on humans. He was profoundly sick in every sense of the term, and he had to resort to these surrogate activities like watching baseball and looking at pictures on a computer screen and taking Xanax. He was a complete mess. Mm -hmm. And his attack wasn't simply because he was a senselessly violent, impulsive chimp, um, which was how his behavior was universally portrayed. Um, immediately before his attack, he had desperately been wanting his owner to drive him somewhere. And the best reason I can think of for why he would want that, looking at his entire life, would be that some little thing he experienced was the last straw and he was overwhelmed. Some little thing he experienced was the last straw and he just became overwhelmed. And how terrifying is that, right? The idea that every single one of us is just one bad day away from being a potential Travis, shall we say. By the life that he had and he wanted to get out of it by changing his environment and the best way that he knew how to deal with that was by getting his owner to drive him somewhere else. Yeah. And when his owner's, owner's friend arrived, he knew that she was trying to coax him back into his life of domestication, and he couldn't handle that, so he attacked her and anyone else who approached him. And dismissing his attack as simply being the senseless, violent impulsiveness of a chimp instead of a human is wishful thinking at best. Mm -hmm. His attack can be seen entirely parallel to the attacks random acts of violence that you bring up on your show every week mm. so he's saying you can liken travis's actions to those of um spree killers or um mass shooters etc like the, he's sort of like well he must have been uh, planning this at the time uh, and it is very disturbing I know there's a lot of people who think he's not real or didn't exist I don't believe that's true I think he's real and I think something very very bad happened to him and I'm interested in finding out what that was a human which the mainstream also has no explanation for and no actual human I just just don't think it would be such a stretch to say that he very well could have been a teenage mall shooter or something like that yeah. A teenage mall shooter or something like that. Uh, yeah. And wow. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Um, that's quite a story. Yeah, that's uh, really apropos, isn't it? Travis yeah. the Chimp. <laughs> it's just that I'm a little surprised that I never heard you bring it up at all because maybe I'm just seeing connections where there aren't any. But no, not, I think not. No, I just, I didn't catch that one. I didn't, uh, maybe I was out of the country or something. I don't know, but I missed it. Thanks very much, man. Thank you. Take Bye. care. So it's so eerie, I think, just listening to how well-spoken he is and how articulate he is, how he deliberately enunciates uh, each word. And um, he did have uh, quite an online uh, presence. And one of the things he had posted uh, in reference to this radio interview was the following, quote, it didn't go as horribly as I anticipated. I wish that I hadn't spoken nonstop about Travis for so long, but I didn't want to seem crazy by randomly bringing up a chimpanzee for unknown reasons. And despite my failed attempt at having a normal voice, I at least sounded less incoherent than usual. I normally speak much softer and swifter with less articulation and less inflection and more mumbling now it seems like 
in his mind, whatever happened to him, he saw himself as like, uh, like sort of like the character from The Catcher in the Rye, which is interesting uh, in a sense. Um, you know, he thought he was saving children from life. Uh, he was an anarcho-primitivist, um, and he used the uh, internet uh, handle Smiggles. I know that. I forget the. I think Cultural Philistine may have been his YouTube channel that was discovered in 2021. Uh, but for whatever reason, he, whatever he was in so much pain, he felt it was necessary to do what he did to these children to quote unquote save them. And with the what we learned about his psychiatrist being charged with SEX crimes involving children, it really makes you wonder if something happened to him as a child that changed his worldview. But um, anyways, I just wanted to present that to you guys, and I'm interested to hear your thoughts on uh, this, um, on Adam Lanza. Do you think he even existed? Do you think he's real? What do you make of this call, this interview, some of the other things that we've seen from him, like the big book of Granny and some of the drawings he did? Um, I, I'm The information about his dad being involved in the LIBOR scandal, which is uh, James Holmes' father was also uh, involved in the same banking scandal. It's just there's so much weirdness about it. So anyways, um, I'm interested to hear your thoughts, though. What do you guys think of this? Whee!